Welcome to our third podcast in Unit 4. This is our last one. So we have talked about ionization energy and atomic radius. Okay, next property we're going to look at. And we didn't graph this one in your activity, and it's electron affinity. Think of electron affinity as the opposite of ionization energy. So ionization energy is an endothermic. It takes energy to remove an electron. So electron affinity is the energy, key thing here, released, meaning it is exothermic. Energy is released. We will be talking these words. You probably heard in biology in a few weeks when we talk about energy. We'll be going over those. But it's the energy released. So when energy is released, we just have it as a negative. So that's what this negative means, it's just energy given off. So if I want to write the equation to form an ion of fluorine, well, fluorine will make a negative ion. So this is talking about electron affinity is forming anions. So fluorine is saying, OK, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to form a negative ion, how does that happen? Well, an electron is going to join the fluorine. When that happens, it actually releases an amount of energy, and it's going to be 300 kilojoules of energy for every mole. Notice the different side that I wrote, the energy. And when we start writing in chemistry speak, things that are being given off or released are written on the right side of the arrow. Things that are taken in or added to a reaction are written on the left side of the arrow. So electron affinity, let's look at the trend then. Same thing, a lot of this, like I said, it's the same, not excuses, it's the same reasoning that we used on our other trends. So if the electron is going to be closer to the protons, you're going to have a greater attraction, you're going to have a greater um, likelihood it forms an anion, you're going to see a larger release. So it's still, and don't let the negative, um, the negative bothers you, just kind of ignore it. Look at the value and then throw a negative in front of it. So it's just saying that the larger the amount of energy, the higher the electron affinity. And it's the same thing, because they're closer, there's the nuclear charge and the shielding. So as you go across a period, as you go across the period, the electrons are going into the same energy level. Therefore, they're pretty much the same distance from the proton. So think of it like a stronger magnet. So you're able to pull in. And there's not as much shielding when they go into the same energy level. Okay, but one thing to keep in mind when we're looking at these trends, notice the exception. The exception is the noble gases. The noble gases do not want any electrons. So this is where it's different than ionization energy. The noble gases, did I say noble electrons? Noble gases, excuse me, noble gases have very high ionization energy because they do not want to lose an electron, so it's going to take a lot of energy to remove. That's why they have very high ionization energy. But they do not want to gain any electrons either, so they do not um, or they're not going to attract it. They're not going to release it. They're not going to gain any electrons, so that's why they are not part of this trend. It's like, ah, we don't want to play with you. So they're not part of the trend for the electron affinity. Now, some of you may overthink and look and say, whoa, we've got some weird beeps. And I'll be honest, electron affinity is one of the ones not as um, used as much or as common. A little bit weirder, um, but we're not focusing on the exceptions again. We'll still look at general trends and just recognize that there are exceptions, but we're just not going to worry about those. So don't overthink it. Don't look at the values. We will never ask you to memorize these values. We're looking at patterns. We're just looking at trends. Okay, now let's look at it different than electronegativity. This is where, again, knowing some of the differences and knowing the definitions. So electronegativity, here's a big thing. It's talking about it in a bond. This means we're looking at in a compound. So in a compound, electrons are sharing electrons. Problem is they don't always share them evenly. So electronegativity is just how strong, think of it like how strong of a magnet does that atom have in order to attract the electrons. And this one they've given a simpler value, and I think you can kind of remember if you were when you were graphing it, the numbers didn't get any higher than four. And so what happens, whoever has the highest number 
we say has the higher electronegativity, that means they're going to be able to attract more electrons. They um, think of them like stealing the electrons. Well, fluorine is, if you look, fluorine is the smallest of the halogens. They're sitting over there with the seven protons, seven electrons. Fluorine really, really needs that eighth electron to be lower energy, more stable. So it was assigned a number four. Okay, and there was um, Pauline assigned it. I'm sure there's reason. I, I'm sure there is reason. I really can't tell you the reason. I just know that fluorine is the most electronegative and its value is four. So everything else then is compared to fluorine. So that means as you go across the period, same reason as you go across the period, those electrons are going into the same energy level. You have your protons in the middle. There's a greater attraction. So that means they have a greater ability to attract those other electrons. So since they have the strong nuclear charge, they're going to attract them. But notice again, we have our exceptions, noble gases, because it's talking about in a bond, in the compounds. And do we worry about noble gases forming compounds? No. At this level? No. No. We're just going to say noble gases are inert. They don't react. Again, we don't focus on exceptions. We're just looking at the general trends in this class. And then it should also make sense. Well, nonmetals, remember nonmetals make the anions. They want the electrons. They are going to, they have more valence electrons. They are going to gain, they are going to have the ability to attract more electrons. They have higher electronegativities. So as you go across the period towards fluorine, you see an increase in electronegativity. Well, as you go down a group, same thing. Look at those outer shell electrons, which are the ones that form a bond. They're getting further away from the protons. There's more shielding. So because electrons are going into the higher energy level, you see a decrease in electronegativity as you go down the group. So we do the same thing. Let's arrange them in an increasing electronegativity. What I see the number one problem is you get confused here. What does increasing mean? Increasing means you're going to start small, right, to large. Okay, fluorine is the largest. So I'm going to start the furthest away from fluorine. So look at what do I have. I have fluorine. Okay, so I have fluorine. I have oxygen. What else do I have? I have sodium. There's neon. I don't know why I'm reading them in this order, and there's boron. Okay, so now be careful. Be very, very careful because you're just automatically going to go, okay, sodium, boron, oxygen, but then wait, whoa, wait, is it going neon? Oh, yeah, neon is the exception. So which is the smallest? Neon is the exception because it's going to be the smallest. They don't want to play. Then you will go to sodium and then boron, and then oxygen, and fluorine has the highest. Okay, so let's look at this. Time we're going to look more at some groups. So let's change colors. Uh, green. So this time, what are my elements? Oh, that was good. Green on green. Sulfur, and then what do I have? Oop, sodium again. And magnesium. I thought I was doing a group. I'm not doing a group, am I? Chlorine, argon. So which is the smallest. Did I fool you? Oh, good job. Argon is right. Argon, and then you're going to have sodium, magnesium, sulfur, and chlorine. Okay, how about the last one? So look at your elements. What do you have? Nitrogen, phosphorus, antimony, and what else did I have? Bismuth. Oh, there it is right there, bismuth. So look at what you're doing. You're going down the group. Well, what's the farthest away from fluorine? Bismuth. So bismuth, and there was no pesky little noble gases. Then you have bismuth, and then you have antimony, you have phosphorus, and you have nitrogen. So if you're going to sum it up, what is it? Well, you see a general increase as you go across the period or a decrease as you go down the group. This increase, decrease, this is what you have to figure out. 
Some people like to see, think of everything as in terms of increasing. Some like to think of it in terms of decreasing. You might have a different way, but you've got to figure out what works for you. And that's what you need to figure out. What I know in electronegativity, I just know that fluorine is the highest and then everything leads towards fluorine. So as long as you remember fluorine is the highest for electronegativity, then this trend should be a little bit easier. Okay. You have a place, you can sum it up. I don't like just arrows, but arrows work. They work good for getting you through some of the questions. But you need to know more than just memorizing the arrows. You need to know the why. And again, the why, because you go across a period, the electrons are added to the same energy level. The same energy level. So what happens then, they're going to fill, again, since they're going into that same energy level, 2p3, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, they're able to fill the pole, and that's what pulls them in. So they get smaller, they have a higher ionization energy because they're being held. Think of it, I know sometimes when we say held tighter, we kind of put a personify, make them seem almost real, lifelike, living, breathing, but it's just easier to understand sometimes when we do that. So those electrons are being pulled in tighter, um, higher ionization energy, a greater attraction for electron affinity, and that also means they're going to have a higher electronegativity. But I need to remember, be careful here, be very, very, very careful, because remember, the exception, noble gases are not are not part of the electronegativity. Well, let's say the electron affinity, the electron affinity and the electronegativity. They are both zero for those trends. And as you remember when you were graphing and you had them as blanks, and that was why when you're going through. They just don't assign an electronegativity um, for them. And again, this is at the level that we're at. This works for where we are at. My other thing, looking at the arrows. Make sure you just don't memorize arrows. You need to know what these properties mean. You need to understand the definition of the properties and have a good understanding of what it's even talking about. Okay, we have pretty much have summed up our trends, and so we're just going to be the rest of the time doing some practicing, and the test next week, you just need to be familiar, and the way that comes with lots of practice. We will see you tomorrow.